Obedience is love. Obedience is fear. Reverential fear. I, um, I want to read some from 2 Samuel again. I want to go back to the life of David. And I want to show, as we read, that he was one of the great men of history who was able and available when the Most High God needed the blessing in the midst of Israel. See, because during the time of the judges, it was not necessarily there. Everyone was doing after their own thinking. Man was doing as it seemed right in his own eyes. But before I go there, I was listening very carefully to the article Chief Uziel read this morning. And you see that people are predicting the end of the world. Judgment Day is coming 6 p.m. this month, the 21st of the month. 21st. <laughs> Two years ago, we needed a new stove. So the owner of our building, he went and got us a stove. You know, I mean, beautiful stove. Now, he lives in Alabama, so his brother who lives here in Brooklyn, he brought the stove over to the house. You know, and he came and asked me, he said, can you do any lifting at all? I said, of course. <laughs> so we lifted that thing and walked it in the house, you know. And then, uh, of course, first he dragged out that old heap, you know. And I don't know why we didn't perish by carbon monoxide or something years ago. <laughs> Good Lord. Anyway, we got that thing outside. And we got the new one in. And as he's, you know, adjusting the hoses and everything, he says to me, I know you're a man of God, so I have to tell you this. The Savior is coming. And the end will be April 2011. He told me this is 2009. And he went through the whole schlemiel. I mean everything. You know. That's right. You know. Ooh, hoo, hoo, boy, oh boy. You know, even, I mean, it was deep. Yeah, I saw him day before yesterday, and it, it is May. 2011, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's coming in the door with his mother because our neighbors moved out upstairs and they, they're coming in the door. And oh, it, it took all my strength <laughs> not to say, hey, hey, hey April's gone. <laughs> Didn't <you> wop in? <laughs> Why are we still standing here shaking hands? You know, and he, he knew it was there. You know, I'm a great actor, you know. So I showed him all the body language and everything. Hmm? <laughs> 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 what happened, Charlie? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Good to see you too, man. Yeah. <laughs> all, <good>. all right. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> boy. He tells me. As long as they're the sun, the moon, and the stars, there's That's going to be some true. Israelites up in this piece, right. Right. you know, in this here land of the living, right. right? So I'm not worried on that count. <laughs> and uh, let me see. I want to see something that the Most High God said himself to Noah after, after the inundation, that is the flood that destroyed everything. He made a prophetic pronouncement to Father Noah. Mm -hmm. Genesis 8, 20, 20. Mm -hmm. oh, Let Genesis me see. 7, 7, 7. Ooh, man, I should have looked it up before, right? Let me see. Okay, it is in 8. You're right. You made it easy for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's read from 20. All right, that would be Genesis 8, 20. See, what we go by is the word of the Almighty. Not by people who have dreams and visions and start up new religions. See, I heard someone who was very bright tell me one time, people will pay a lot if you lie to them. Oh boy, they'll kick that money out like crazy. 
Just tell them something stupid. There was a guy one time, maybe this is a, um, what, what you call that, an urban legend. All he did was stand on the corner and look up. And somebody else came and stood next to him. <laughs> and then here come about 10 people. They all stand there. <laughs> well, what's going on? He said, you don't see it. And he started preaching. Next thing you know, he got a building and 100 people up in there and 100 and then 200. And <laughs> we the ones looking. <laughs> That's right. And the end is coming. In 1955, everybody fold to die. The uh, Russellites, they rented Yankee Stadium. They were going to go from there into the heavenlies or something. You know, yeah, they were all going to take off from there. They packed that place. How many can go to old Yankee Stadium? About 60,000 people. And they were on the field. They were in all the stands. And everybody's waiting for the end. And all them people had to get back on the train and go home. Ain't nothing happening. <laughs> Boy, what's going on? Everybody's going back home. <laughs> I want my son, Malachi Ben Naftali, to read from 8.20, Genesis 8, the 20th verse, to the end. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Noah built it an altar unto Jehovah. And took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Jehovah smelt the sweet savor. And Jehovah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. God said that. You see that? After he received that offering, that sweet savor came up. That sweet savor is a description of the pleasantness it gave to the eternal himself. It pleased him that the man in whom he found righteousness and returned the blessing of Adam into, it pleased him that he had accomplished that mission, bringing life from death into the new earth that was now being rejuvenated for man's use. And he began to speak to him. And what did he say to him? I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. In the 1950s, when the great superpowers had the atomic energy, and they went from atomic bomb to hydrogen bomb to neutron bomb, and everybody was afraid that some dummy might push a button and blow up the entire earth. We were all afraid. That's before I knew who Yah was. We were all afraid. And they had us in public school jumping under desks, holding our heads down. If this thing is going to incinerate, you know, incinerate the earth, what am I doing under a wooden desk? <laughs> Hiding, you know. Air raid. Yeah, the air raid. Dr -dr 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 -dr. Well, now, children, go down and get under the desk and cover your head. You know, the Russians are bombing the country. All right. Well, I didn't know this. He is not going to curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Those are those guys running around talking about when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. I want to catch that idiot that's going to give me the keys to his infinity. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I want. I do not want that guy. I want the infinity. And, and, yeah, and that split level out there in, uh, in the Hamptons. Yeah, I want your thing. <laughs> that's right. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. See, that's the one in charge. There was no such thing as, as uh, Chairman Khrushchev in Moscow was going to push a button and John Kennedy in Washington, D.C. was going to push a button and annihilate humankind. Most High God is not going to allow it. 
The human mind or his strength is not able to do what has not been spoken by a creator God himself. And this here is the beauty. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. It's not going to end. Shall not cease. That means what? There's going to be no end until he says so. And that is not reveal it to any schmo up and down the street. Because somewhere in the prophecy, he said, I will not do anything except I reveal it unto you. So it's going to come in unto us. That's the only way. And it's not, it's not happening. No, no, no. And I'm not, prof I mean, following after Prophet Jones on the radio. Nobody. And Harold Camping, that's a madman. He'd been, he been describing the end of time ever since he came on the radio. He had to sign up on, on St. John's Place off of uh, Schenectady Avenue, right up over the side wall of, of the, uh, it was a hardware store, right near the fire station. And I think it was 1994, everything was supposed to be dead. That sign was still there in 1998, 1990, it's still there, <laughs> losing its color, just, just dripping, you know. And then he switched to now it's this year. Well, take heart. Anyone who trusts in the Almighty God, we just heard it from him. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat. Yes, sir. Amen. We, wanna, we want to read some from the book of 2 Samuel in the 13th chapter. Last time I said, I'm not going to reread 2 Samuel 11 in public anymore. I've been through that with uh, David's ordeal. I'm not doing that again. But after that ordeal, he was forgiven. That's right. And that forgiveness, I mean, that's something we can all get a hold of. Every one of us, get a hold of it. Sometimes when you have stepped off the bag and you have done that which is evil in the sight of the Almighty and you repent, there is something in you that lets you know the Most High loves you. Yes, sir. He got you now. Don't hold anything against yourself. Learn to forgive yourself and others and operate within that love. As David, the son of Jesse, king of all Israel, did. And we know that his wisdom returned to him. His son was adopted by the heavenly father and called Yadidja, also Shalomo by his Abba. And then he was given victory in the war over the enemies. And, they, and he went out himself and took off the head, or he ended the life of Malcolm, took off from his head his crown and placed it upon his own head. But we must go back to one very important thing. The Most High forgave him, but told him there will be judgment. There will always be judgment for the act. No matter how much the Most High loves you, when it's paid, he's got you. But here, it begins to happen. One of the words was, the sword shall never depart from thy house. Now that's something that must come. speaks and then he brings it to pass. We're in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it came to pass after this that Absalom the son of David had a fair sister whose name was Tamar and Amnon the son of David loved her and Amnon was so distressed that he fell sick because of his sister Tamar for she was a virgin and it seemed hard to Amnon to do anything unto her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Yonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Yonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why, O son of the king, art thou thus become leaner from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? 
And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. And Yonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and feign thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, Let my sister Tamar come, I pray thee, and give me bread to eat, and dress the food in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down, and feigned himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said to the king, Let my sister Tamar come, I pray thee, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. That I may eat at her hand. The beginning of the intrigue is right here. The beginning of the evil of the sword and its devastation is begun. And this time it says it came to pass that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. The one who's very interesting here is Yonadab, a friend. What a, a friend. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Amnon, for the, <laughs> for the most part, he must be some kind of a weird guy anyway. You know, he's a beast, man. You know, he got no kind of uh, scruples here. He's looking at, he's a prince. Every babe out there wants to hang with him. Right? But he sees this one and the lust is set in. See, the lust doesn't get in unless you give in to it. There's something about choosing that which is good and right in the sight of Yehovah. You know, nobody is above these temptations. But when you are working in this Torah, the choice becomes so simple. This is evil against Yah. How shall I entertain it? Get it out. Throw it away. But this one here, he welcomes it. He looks upon her, man, he's got, you know the first time you've ever had that what you thought was love? Oh boy, it hurt so good. Oh. Oh, it hurt so good. Oh, Dolores. Oh, that slipped out, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13. Give me a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How did that happen? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you, you know the feeling. <laughs> it's so painful, it's good. <laughs> you see? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> this fellow is miserable. He's unscrupulous. He already has identified her. That's the daughter, you know, of my Abba. See, what does the law say? Right? That's it. It don't matter if it's the daughter of your mother, the daughter of your Abba. It don't matter. So he, he bypasses that. None of that counts. This babe is hot, and I need her. I need her. I do not need the rest of them who are around the palace all the time trying to get my digits. Don't need her. <laughs> I need I like that. this one. You see? All right. So his main man, you see, he's got an entourage just like the movie stars. <laughs> but, uh, but the main man, he's, he's clocking him. You know, I know exactly how to get a Rolex out of my boy. I know exactly how. <laughs> Listen, why are you all messed up every morning? Every time I come to pick you up to go chariot riding, you, you look like dead man. And I, lo I love my sister, man. I mean, it, it, actually, her, his sister. Yeah, it, it's Absalom's sister, you know. So, he said, "Listen now. So now." Um, the adversary is right here. I'm going to tell you how to get that. You listen to me, you're going to be hitting that soon. You understand? Now watch it, there's just a move. You see, there's a move. <laughs> when, there's, there's a move. There's nothing new. 
See, if I can put it into the 21st century where you can absorb it and see what's happening. People are doing this right now. Around the corner, downtown. Forgive me, it's Cincinnati. No. <laughs> but <laughs> no place is exempt. See, this word that my son Malachi is reading is not just going into the camera and into the microphone and being recorded for posterity. It's going through the windows, the walls, the ceiling. It's going out into the ether. Somebody somewhere is going to be prevented. The spirit is going to hit him. I can't do this thing. This is bad. They don't even know the word evil. This is bad. This is nasty. I'm going to back up off of this. But this one here, he's susceptible. And if you're susceptible, there's a monster right there who's going to make you know to move. See? He said, come on, man. Come on. You're the son of the king. You can get anything. Anything. Yeah. Listen to me, son. <laughs> And John the Dobbs said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and feign thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, you know your Abba coming to see you. You see? So then you do your thing. <laughs> Let Tamar make me some, some nice cakes and everything, you know. Yeah, all right. Okay. So Amnon lay down and fainted himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, Let my sister Tamar come, I pray thee, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Now let's read. Verse 7. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him food. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was lying down, and she took dough and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took the pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. And they went out, every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber, that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them near unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this wanton deed. And I, whither shall I carry my shame? And as for thee, thou wilt be as one of the base men in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit, howbeit he would not hearken to her voice. But being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. He raped her. He forced her and committed rape. This is not only incest, this is a heinous crime. She said, no, man. You know, I, I, people might think this is a uh, cliche, but no means no. That's it, man. If you can't say, well, later, I'm, I'm out. There's something wrong with you. There has to be some substance within us to be able to control and choose life. When Moses was getting ready to go up that mountain for the last time, he said, I set before you life and death. I'm repeating something here. Life and death, blessing and cursing, good and evil. Choose life. Choose life. And all he was presenting was the Torah. This whole thing is nothing but two things, life and death. That's right. This history is teaching us what not to do. Mm -hmm. That is Torah. The first five books is the whole revelation of God's plan for the blessing to return into man's grasp. The rest of this book testifies that the first five is the truth, absolute truth. All of it, the history, the writings, the wisdom, and the prophecies, all right? But what he did here 
was he got her to get into the bedchamber. He threw out the whole entourage. Out. The guards, you see, he's a prince under the great king himself. He not only has his boys, he got armed lifeguards. You can't get to him. Any kind of invasion or attempted assassination will be quelled immediately by these men who stand guard over his life. Oh, they got to an answer to David himself. He made all of them get out. And then he grabbed her. Lie with me, my sister. She got so desperate, she said, why don't you just ask for me? Go to my Abba. That is desperation. Yeah, but that was, that's a human condition. Ask for me. Maybe we could get this thing the way you want it. If she got that much time to get him into the sight of his father. He'd have, you know, he'd have saved her from that fool. <laughs> But things are beginning to happen here that will bring the sword. Let's read it. Verse 15. Then Amnon hated her with exceeding great hatred. For the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, Not so, because this great wrong in putting me forth is worse than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. Now she had a garment of many colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. They were apparelled in a certain manner. People saw them and understood. She had never known a man. This is a virgin. That was, ooh, yes, that dress code was something. Everybody didn't walk around any old way. See? No, no, she wasn't a slipper drag of wearing pajama pants down to the corner <laughs> store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, girl, you got a cigarette? <laughs> yeah. Go down by Mohammed and get me a Lucy. <laughs> no, Mohammed said, you got to come yourself, girl. I just got a pack. <laughs> she ain't one of them. And we know too many of them. We have to set the example. Make our young virgins look like that. And present themselves to the world like that. As long as they remain like that. And they should remain like that until the Abba hands them off. And that's what she was supposed to have in her life. A princess born to the royal seed to be taken by a man of God into a marriage chamber where her flowers would be revealed. This time, her hymen was broken by her brother. Her blood is on his bed. And she has no thing but shame, nowhere to go. She tore those garments and went out. But look how she had to go out. Please don't put me out. Let me stay here. Rather live there in shame with this bastard. Rather than go back out that door. See how she was raised? She was raised to the manner born. She was born to the manner of nobility. To go out there like that, even if nobody knew what happened. She knew. She stained. Her mind is deranged now. And see how it's done? Get out from me. Hey, hey, come in here. Put her out and bolt the door. Boom, she hears that sound, man, and she's out there in the cold. But where am I going to go? Wow. Let's read. And his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. Verse 19. And tomorrow put ashes on her head and rent her garment of many colors that was on her. And she laid her hand on her head and went her way, crying aloud as she went. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Have Amnon thy brother been with thee? But now hold thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Take not this thing to heart. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. 
And Absalom spoke unto Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister to mourn. You see what's going on here? It started. It started. The sword is about to be drawn. He sees her. He sees the condition she is in. And he knows. There's something about this blood kin business, man. We're connected by spirit and blood. That's right. That's right. Many times you, you have that, that foreknowledge. This guy has a design on baby girl. Or if you've just come from there because maybe he knew she had gone there. That's right. Okay. She had gone there to present him with something that would turn to medicine in his body the way he described it. Mm -hmm. But when he sees her, has Amnon been with thee? He says, I know already. I already know. So he tries to ease her pain. You know, don't take it to heart. He's your brother. <laughs> Don't take it to heart. See, the wheels are turning now. I'm going to destroy his ass. But for now, you stay in my house. And the word gets back to the king. Why does not the king come out and lay hold on him with his bodyguard, the same bodyguard that guards him? Drag him out here. Why not? He is remembering God's pronouncement about the sword will not depart from thy house. It's fresh in his mind. This is of God. This evil is come because of me. No. And he holds his peace. He holds his peace. Let's read it. Verse 23. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which was beside Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant have sheep shearers. Let the king, I pray thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, lest we be burdensome unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. But blessed him. Read a little more. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him, and he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. And let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Sheep shearers in Baal Hezor. The sheep shearers, well, this is the time of the year when they shear the sheep. And that's payday. And that's also <laughs> feast time. That's celebration. Oh, baby, everybody gets drunk. They get fat with food and everything and, and is dancing. You see, it's like the celebration because of the season where we do the bartering with whomever wants our stuff and we get from them and we get paid and the servants get paid and the king's revenue rises. Well, in this case, it's Absalom. <laughs> He's in business on his own. And he wants to go up to celebrate. But what does he do? He starts playing the game. Abi, come, come, you know. He, no, man, that's your thing. I don't need to be there. It'll be a burden on you. You have to feed me and all my retinue as well. Right. All right, okay, listen then. If you won't come, let Amnon come. You know, he's waiting for the rebuttal. Why should he come? But he kept pressing him. Come on, I want all my brothers there. It's a great time for me. I want to celebrate with my brethren. You won't be there. Bring it. Let everybody come. They can bring their pals. And hey, you know, it's going to be tight. Whoa, man. Music. You know, Jay Z will be there, man. It's going to be nice. <laughs> he said, Yeah, well, Amnon digs Jay Z. He can go. You know, all right. Or was it the other guy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's the tight guy right now. I, I just barely know who Jay-Z is. <laughs> you know? He's gone. Huh? Too rich. Well, the king, he felt something, didn't he? Why Amnon? 
See, but it's been two years. You know how he plotted this? He went through two Passovers, two Shavuot, <laughs> two. <laughs> Right? He's gone through two uh, blowing of trumpets, Yom Teruah, two days of atonement. Went and hugged that suck, I forgive you. Didn't tell him nothing good or bad. They all fasted and everything, prayed for forgiveness. You know, how do you, how do, you do that? Peace and humble is the way. Peace and humble is the way. Peace and humble is the way. And now, like you just said, he lulled him to sleep. Man, Absalom throw the baddest sheep sharing deals, man. And he invited all of us. Let's all go up. All right, let's read it. Verse 28. And Absalom commanded his servant, saying, Mark ye now, with Amnon's heart is merry with wine. And when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. I mean, that was something, right? He said, listen, now, he told his servants. And these are the ones who are, what, committed to serving him. We, we don't really know what that is like. But they were his servants. They did what he said. And the only thing he gave them with an, of encouragement was, the blood is on me. Don't you worry, I commanded you. So when you see him getting nice, kill him. Everybody's eating. They're reclining and everything, you know. The, the, the baby girls from over in Moab have come. And they, <laughs> and they rocking and rolling. These guys are drinking. And, hey, man. And they watch. The time is right. They smote him. Wow! Boom, death blows, blood gushing everywhere. Especially if you hit scalp in certain areas and that hot blood is going. All the rest of them brothers jumped up, everybody on their ass getting out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that stuff, man? <laughs> man, blood hitting that high up in the air. Whoa, and they all drunk too. You know, up, <laughs> you know that sober hit you. <laughs> and now, you know how everybody knew, but ain't nobody talked about it for two years? Everybody knew. You don't walk up to a prince royal and, and be jumping in his face. Now, how did you do such a You didn't say nothing. They just looked at Absalom. Absalom is at peace. So everybody let it be. But once those blows were struck, Whoa! And yeah, vengeance is. Man, oh man, and they're getting out of town. Let's read it. Verse 30. And it came to pass while they were in the way that the tidings came to David, saying, Absalom have slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose and rent his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons. For Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from this day, that he forced his sister to mark. Now therefore, let my lord, the king, take the thing to his heart, to think that all the king's sons are dead. For Amnon only is dead. Is this the same John the Dog? Yes. This is the same. This is the same wicked sucker. He's all, the creep is always there. And look, bad news travel fast. They still riding in David. No. What? There was somebody got out of there quicker than all of them. <laughs> and you know that guy too. You met him. <laughs> He's around here somewhere. Soon as something happened, he'll be in Cincinnati before the car, the plane, everything. He'll be in, in East New York before I get there. And what does he do? Whomever this, this person is, <laughs> all your sons are dead. Every single one of them dead, bleeding to death right now. <laughs> they all dead. Seen it with my own eye. 
<laughs> blood all over the place. There's some blood right here. Oh, Lord, you should have been there. Huh? See? But now, Jonadab, chill, chill, chill. Listen, your royal majesty, I know the whole story. See, I know Amnon is dead because Absalom busted him when he did it to your other daughter. You see? And now he plotted to do this all the time. And so when, don't worry yourself, only Amnon is dead. Who gonna, who gonna miss him? And that, that, <laughs> and that was his ace. <laughs> That's his main man. <laughs> that was my man's in them, right? <laughs> but he knew not to go to that there sheep sharing thing. <laughs> he stayed back. <laughs> Boy, me and Amnon is tight, but I ain't going up there with him. <laughs> Boy, Absalom is too smooth. I'm not going up there. Absalom might have taken him out too. Hmm? <clears throat> because if he had any spiritual, you know, foreknowledge or some kind of intuition that you had something to do with this, you dead with him. But he's back there with the king, ingratiating himself to him. So that now when the word comes back that all of them are not dead, he looks good. This monster is going to live a while. Mm -hmm. So be careful of those who would give any kind of, any kind of advice that is against the word of God. Anything. You know, and they'll, they'll slip that little subtle thing in there. You, you can do it like this. Hmm? No, maybe listen. God knows how you feel. Whoa, you ever hear that one? God knows how you feel. Come on, man. I'm going to repeat what I say almost every time I'm up here. God don't care how you feel. Not one bit. If it is against his word. If it's against anything against his word. If it's added to it, subtracting from it, or making it null and void in your life. He don't care how you feel. And this was the kind of character this one was. Be on your guard. Drink of the word of the living God every day so that when foolishness comes in, you got it. Whoa, whoa. Mm -mm. That don't even sound real. Step off, man. Get some distance. But there's nothing godly in what you just said. Nothing godly at all. Let's read it. Verse 34, but Absalom fled, and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there came much people in the roundabout way by the hillside. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons are come, as thy servant said, so it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he made an end of speaking, that behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept, and the king also and all his servants wept very sore. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. This Talmai, that's his granddaddy. By the woman David had him out of. And he's a king. That's going to come in handy later on especially when he comes back and starts desiring to overthrow his Abba. Okay. He, don't, he don't really respect his father anymore because he thinks he went and saw how a real king operates. Mm -hmm. And he's half of that anyway. There, there's something to what we read this morning. Mm -hmm. Don't give your sons unto them. Mm -hmm. You see, you mingle with heathens there's impact on the growth in that child. And when he got over there and saw the, how the other side was, he started rocking like that. Okay, and if it's not Talmai, it's the other one, but it's his grandfather. His grandfather by his mother's side. So here we have, he fled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a prince on both sides. Both sides of the aisle. <laughs> See? And they lifted up their voice. Before we get to that, 
And it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of speaking that behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. See, they're crying because they witnessed this thing. This assassination took place right there where they were celebrating. And no matter what, it was their brother. So there was a time of mourning. Now, David's tears are probably for both because now he's lost Absalom. And that's his favorite. That's the one he loves. He's, he's stuck on Absalom. Even if he did what he wanted him to do to this monster, now he's lost him. And we'll see that later on also. But when Absalom fled, he went to his mama's people and to be safe. And to be safe from uh, prosecution and possible execution. All right. For well, he was comforted concerning Amnon. All right. And the soul of King David failed with longing for Absalom. For he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. It's like this. This guy is dead. He needed killing. But Absalom, he has given up his freedom and possibly his life for this act. Amen? All right, I'm not going to go any further right now because um, personally I am not a Sunday worshiper. <laughs> and <laughs> that didn't go past everybody. Some, <laughs> some of them got it. That's right. It's Yom Rishon. <laughs> it's Yom Rishon. Let's hear it from Ore Mishael. Hallelujah. <laughs> And many of us will be in celebration with him tomorrow. But right now, I'm so grateful for all congregation of Yehovah. And thank God that he keeps us together. Love never dies. Don't let anything come in between us, anything. Neither here nor there, wherever we come from. If we're apart, let the love always keep us together. Right? Amen. 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 May the Most High God bless us all. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Shabbat.